This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map, Carvel, and we are back for a proper 2v2v2. Not that FFA shenanigan, at least not for this video. I don't think. We'll find out. Anyways, as the Orange Empire in the top right hand corner, this is Yeager. Their ally as the Yellow, this is R2R2. Moving on to the middle group of allies, and by that I mean teammates, not uh, that they're actually playing allies. Hey, this guy is, as the purple, this is Justin5959. We've seen him before, and the last time we saw him, his teammate crashed out of the game right from the first second, so he was playing a 1v2v2. As the blue Soviets not crashing out, this is Hostile Ways AFK, which is quite a name. Circling around to our final team, the red, constantly under assault, this is King Vegeta. Something something Dragon Ball Z. Meanwhile, as his teammate, as the Cyan, this is Forever Hello. I don't know, it's 4-U-V-A, 4-E-L-L-O. So I don't know, Forello or Hello, but uh, we'll call him Hello just because it's easy. King Vegeta and Hello under assault immediately. Pretty common for the player on the island in the southern spot to abandon it for the water, but not always as common for them to go straight into this direct assault with uh, no hope of stopping it. King Vegeta having to turn tail and run. Ooh, this is a crates game as well. Again, crates and Red Alert 3 probably won't make a difference, but maybe we'll see a game one time where the crates really matter. Of course, dropping a crane over here. Oh. Uh, this is a lot of cash. Does he have any income? Okay, so he does have a refinery. So as long as he gets enough to at least get an oil derrick, I guess he could grab some of these money crates that are around the place. But it looks like Justin, unlike the last time we saw him, he's actually going to be set up pretty nicely for a follow-up attack. And actually, no! Hello! This guy building a Tesla coil. He is not going to be giving up this spot without a fight. And he is going to be doing what he can to make this as difficult a location to take as possible. He also did manage to get the cash back on this oil derrick. So, hello, looking quite strong so far in this game. More cash coming into King Vegeta. He needs as much cash as he can possibly get. He's pretty safe on the uh, power front. He's got that super reactor up and running. He's got himself a crane. So uh, he could potentially drop, ooh, I was going to say he could drop a refinery and then move on. Although this is his refinery here because that is his allies build radius. So dropping a couple of sentry guns as well right next to that barracks. And the MCV may be forced to pack up. So some of these structures may be canceled. Regardless, the bear is barely not going to get there in time. So the MCV is forced to pack up. But for the current moment, that MCV will finish. I guess the uh, thing was building on a crane and not actually on the MCV, so everything got to finish up nicely. Javelin soldiers and peacekeepers are all here. Forever is going to be getting knocked out of the spot, and of course switching your peacekeepers over to that mode where they have the shields is a great idea to help get the laser lock down a little bit more quickly, or a little bit more safely, so that you can knock down all of those structures one after the other. Ooh. We all have to do it sometimes, but that refinery placement sucks. That Tango getting some free damage off, and this refinery getting leech beamed by that tank from the high ground. Eventually, King Vegeta may be finally pushed out of his own starting location, but at the same time, Justin is not having an easy time expanding out to the corner, and even Yigor from the north going to be finding a bit of re revenge for what he lost earlier when he was trying to take that MCV. He's going to be going for the harass, going for the attack of that crane, going to be forcing some cash to be spent repairing it or possibly even killing it off. Yeager and R2, R2 looking to take the fight to the enemy in a pretty significant way. Bears coming in and they're gonna crush through so many Javelin soldiers. The Javelins barely make it back to that Peacekeeper multi-gunner turret in time, but still a couple of Javelin soldiers do pay the ultimate price for their placement. And unfortunately for Justin, he's not able to easily push back 
his enemy. He was hoping to be able to take over this spot a little more confidently, but Hostile Ways has actually taken over the entire corner of the map, so he's got his refineries placed well. He's got lots of income worrying away for him. Forever going to be getting pushed away. Tangu's coming in from the north. Someone dropping down a Tesla coil. But how long is that Tesla coil really going to last? We'll see. We'll see if it gets up against these tank busters that are coming in. The bears get a roar off, but it's a little bit too late. The Tangu's not clearing out the bears, so the tank busters can get to work on the Tesla coil, which means the Tesla coil will indeed finish. The bear lands the roar, and everything gets pushed back. Yigor not able to handle that attack, and Yigor... Also uh, slowly expanding, but there are still a couple of potentially open refineries that he could take, maybe in short order. All right, Hostile Ways. This guy is just screaming ahead. He's up to V4s. He's uh, constructing quite a lot to help his ally break this location, and he's actually poised to potentially take this location for himself. The... Uh, Tesla coil gets eliminated. Another one gets deployed. You got to hand it to Hostile Ways. He is doing a lot of pulling for Justin. So Justin has got his two little refineries here looking nice and cute. A third refinery there. And Hostile Ways is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with the infrastructure. Dropping down those Tesla coils. Trying to keep Justin safe so that Justin can eventually power up to, I assume, that big late game tier 3 allied army which is what I assume they are going for. A little combination of some aircraft carriers, maybe some V4s on the land, that sort of thing. Since this is a team game, I would not kind of like to see someone going for... Uh, if, they, if we get to the uh, high production upgrade, I forget what it's called, but the uh, thing where you get cheaper units and vehicles, everything just costs a little bit less as the late game Soviets... And uh, one time, I think it was on Infinity Isle, someone built like three or four war factories, and then they had Terra Drone Surprise as well, and you just build bullfrogs, and you send the bullfrogs into the Crusher Crane. And the bullfrogs, with the, with the upgrade, you actually don't lose any money on the bullfrogs. However, ooh, lovely combination, satellites and cryo shot. It misses Natasha, so Natasha's going to come down here and snipe this aircraft carrier or possibly go for nothing at all because the terror drone gets the kill hostile ways once again the defense of justin but anyways you can kind of do an infinite money glitch where you get a bunch of war factories and then you just produce bullfrogs and the bullfrogs you get the same amount back from them <laughs> that looks so funny it has so much momentum dropping onto that refinery and then it just gets shooked away by that assault destroyer Striker VX is coming in. They don't get the shots off that they need. Hydrofoils push them back. Uh, you can build war, uh, bullfrogs, and then with the terror drone surprise upgrade, eventually some of the bullfrogs will spawn terror drones. You can send the terror drones, which cost you nothing, into that crusher crane as well. And so it actually generates you money, but at a relatively slow pace. There's the cancel on one of the flak cannons, and of course the super reactor going to be the obvious target for hostile ways. Well, for Igor, but of hostile ways. Nice pullback of those strikers, and maybe a couple of them will go down. No, none of them. They're all right on the edge of range there. MCV, no, the power plant gets sniped just as a multi gunner turret gets deployed. And man, Justin and Hostile suddenly under some heavy threat as we do have Natasha on the high ground, ready to snipe anything that's standing by. Striker showing up. The Tangu's not worried about the, v the flat cannon. They're worried more about the bullfrog on the ground. They finally get the kill there on that bullfrog. And it looks like Natasha almost getting sniped by those aircraft drones. And somehow, Forever Hello and King Vegeta have escaped notice. The two of them have escaped off to the corner of the map. They're just kind of hanging out over there, and they're waiting for Igor R2, R2, Hostile Ways, AFK, and Justin59 to all kill each other, or at least the two teams of them to kill each other. Hostile Ways manages to hold on to these two refineries, trading blows with the Empire player and forcing him away eventually. 
No Shogun battleships to help break the front line of those defenses. And now aircraft carrier is going to be going for the snipe of the battle lab. Justin might be able to take down the tech of his opponent and maybe even up the score for how much damage he's been taking in this game. Goodbye, Super Reactor. The V4 gets a missile off, but once again, it's just going to be absorbed by that Assault Destroyer. AMP fires off. EMP locks down three V4s, and the cryo shot will get the rest. They don't even move. That EMP affecting so many units. The Assault Destroyer does eventually go down, and Natasha is going to sacrifice herself into an aircraft carrier, trying to fire off an EMP, I assume, as he's looking to even the score. And a couple of those V4s went down, but ultimately getting an aircraft carrier EMP'd is uh, unfortunately what just happened, but no, R2 from the high ground gets the snipe. Our Shogun battleships finally coming in. Yes, they are to assist R2 in his assault of this combined allied Soviet base. Oh, the Shogun battleships just cleaned up that refinery. Maybe they can get this one on the far side as well. One refinery going down, Justin and Hostile Ways both being assaulted directly, and it looks like they may be getting knocked out of the water relatively soon. Can they survive just on land? Justin has one refinery, so he's still got a bit of income, and Hostile Ways has a decent amount of income, but for how much longer? Everything on the water getting pushed back. Hostile Ways and Justin, they spent a lot of cash, and I guess they don't have anything to show for it losing too much of their stuff. A super reactor in the corner, a little bit easier to defend. Lots of V4s for hostile ways, but they're not get doing them any good right now. Dolphin comes out. The Dolphin can close the distance, and this would truly be a heroic Dolphin if he's able to avoid everything. <laughs> yes, Justin, no! The Dolphin jump landed him right in the path of the Shogun anyways. And unfortunately, Justin was not able to make the heroic comeback with a single dolphin against two Shogun battleships. Twin Blades coming in. This could be King Vegeta showing his hand and revealing that he wants to get into this fight as well. There's almost a temporary truce between Forever Hello and King Vegeta and Yigor and R2R2. Those two teams seem to be in close proximity in the north, but not attacking each other in any way. They're all focused on cleaning up this Justin, Justin, or this Justin and Hostile kind of uh, team. Both wrongs and twin blades, but only three twin blades here. Not a lot of anti-air defense, so honestly, these twin blades could do something here. They could at least start killing that. The Bullfrogs would have to clean up the... Oh, Tanya gets the infect. She gets the... No, she doesn't. No, she does. She gets the kill on at least two of those. Uh, why are they not dying? That was... That was weird. Tanya should have killed that... That Tangu much quicker. I don't know what that was. Terragrone gets the infect on that... Harvester and Justin bringing in the bomber, trying to clean up those Tangus, but it won't quite work out for him. Tier 3 gets taken down, and these fully heroic Shogun battleships doing so much damage, and now they're both actually fully heroic, so they've got that extended range as well. V4 is getting some shots off, and finally the terror, the twin, uh, the Tangus all go down. It looks like the Twin Blades helping to clean them up as well as that V4. And all right, Forever Hello is going to be pushing in. APOC tanks, Natasha, and V4s all going to be potentially clashing in the bottom left-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner, and Terror Drones get the double infect. The perfect move here by Hostile Ways. The satellites almost crashing in to those Shoguns as well, but that's two fully heroic Shoguns a long ways from home. Perfect kill of the Twin Blades and the Bullfrogs by those two, by those uh, two Tangus. Oh my gosh, are they gonna get, no, barely there's another bullfrog here, so they won't necessarily get every single twin blade, but yes, they do get every single twin blade. They're willing to sacrifice themselves for it, and the bullfrog does push away the last Tangu in Paris, and no, it doesn't get away. It does go down. 
Wave Force Artillery. A couple of strikers as well making their way forward in the north. APOC tanks have given a brief moment of pause. Justin getting continually pushed around. And these two Shogun battleships, one of them is definitely going down. The other one desperately close to making it back to that naval yard. It might die under the bridge. And makes it through to the other side of the bridge. It's so close to that naval yard. And it might just barely not make it just moments away. Goodbye. That terror drone gets a heroic kill there as the Wave Force artillery pushing forward with the King Onis and the Striker VXs to break the base of Forever and King Vegeta. Sentry Bomber coming through for another run. Justin and Hostel are still in this game. All six players somehow still in this game. All of the battering and bruising that's happened, but no one has actually died. Terror Drone for Forever gets cleaned up. One of them gets the infect on the striker and may get a Wave Force Artillery very shortly thereafter. Ooh, doesn't. He goes for another striker. I think that was manually targeted there, so he wants to try and clean up the anti-air. It's going to take a while for those Terror Drones to do that, though. Sentry Gun and a, <laughs> and a Tesla Coil going to both be attacking this King Oni. This Conscript, he's just helping out as well as more King Onis come in. But Forever with a giant Twin Blade army, that's why he wanted to jump on that anti-air. He gets the transform, but it doesn't matter as the MiGs clean him up. Satellites getting called in, and this base will not be broken. It looks like the MCV got cleaned up. The last Wave Force artillery going down. The last King Oni's under threat, and this Soviet base has been held albeit barely as more Shogun battleships showing up. They're going to try and push away this army, but they're going to need some good anti-air against all these Twin Blades to stop them from getting jumped. I think you're actually going to need more than three Stingrays. I don't know if that'll really be enough. Double Kirov, but they won't make it to their destination as the Shogun battleship's getting some nice shots off, but here come the Twin Blades to jump on them. One of them going down extremely quickly. The other two are under threat as well, but they're gonna pull back those Twin Blades. Oh, finally, the Tangus are here. And they're gonna get so many Twin Blade kills. No Bullfrogs underneath them to save them from those terror, from those Tangus. The terror of the skies, the Tangu indeed. Nice kill utilizing that C-Wing as our first vacuum imploder gets added to the map. R2-R2 is going to be looking to get himself a uh, big shiny explosion sooner or later. Tangu killing off some of these twin blades. They're going to be going for the Mecha Bay, dropping satellites on top of the power plants as well. But that Mecha Bay takes quite a bit of a beating from those quickly dying twin blades. Satellite comes in, cleans up the power plants, but not much else. Justin with two refineries. This guy is looking as fine as he can. He has got such little amount of stuff on this map, but uh, he's trying. He's doing whatever he can. APOC tank gets jumped on. Yegor going to be trying to finally break this location. The Striker's now going to be coming in to take care of the Tesla Coil and try and clean up the APOC tanks as well. The Bullfrog's getting some free damage off on those Strikers. Another MCV emerges, and the Strikers are going to try and jump on the Bullfrogs. They grab one of them, but the last Bullfrog, nearly fully heroic, might go down at the last second. No! He survives for just a moment, and then he dies. Sweet dreams, sweet prince. We might see you another time. Iron Curtain from King Vegeta in the south. And his Shogun battleship's going to be knocking down those war factories. Finally, this location might be broken. There isn't much left to defend it. And it's got Shogun battleships constantly taking shots off at it. V4 going to be working away at this refinery. Kills off the Harvester. And eventually, maybe, maybe this location will be broken. They're still fighting tooth and nail for it forever. And King Vegeta going to be try trying to hold this location. <laughs> 
man comes out, I don't know what this bear is hoping to do, but he's actually drawing the fire of those Shogun battleships. Those Shoguns could be shooting anything else, but they're attacking this bear. That is fantastic. The biggest pro move you have ever seen. Oh my gosh, so many volleys from those Shogun battleships and none of them landed against that bear until the very end. A couple of twin blades going down there. R2 starting to close in from the north, but he's actually going to get swallowed up. There is way too much stuff here from Hostel, and there is no anti-air, so everything's just going to go down, potentially even to the Twin Blades. We'll see if the Hammer Tanks really get in on the fight. A couple of the Hammer Tanks going down to the V4s, but a Terror Drone getting in an effect, and the Sickle over here useless on the right side as these V4s getting their last couple of shots off. No, the Tangus show up at the last moment. Igor coming in with the Hail Mary move, but he's going to get pushed away by the massive army of Blue as Hostile Ways defends his buddy. And, uh, well, I guess sort of just defends himself because it's his own Twin Blades, but same difference. Okay, so somehow... Hello has managed to hold on to this little section of the map once again. Against all odds, against all onslaughts, he will not be stopped. And they say, hey, well, you know, we're going to just break your southern expansion or your main base, whatever you want to call it. Natasha shows up with a bear. Ooh, this is a killer combo. You can take yourself a Shogun battleship, kill the fully heroic one, take it over with your bear. <laughs> That bear loves to pilot naval vessels. Loves to pilot himself big old gunships. Bullfrogs get jumped on. Oh, flak troopers inside of the battle bunker. Everyone always asks, well, a couple of people always ask, hey, why don't people put flak troopers inside of battle bunkers? It's uh, generally just very expensive, but in this particular moment, you do see it paying pretty big dividends in this kind of a situation. Of course, they're not great against uh, artillery, but they do pretty well against uh, against Twin Blades and Tangus. The Engineer goes down, but every single Twin Blade gets eliminated. Natasha going for the snipe, but she's uh, maybe getting getting get hunted. Oh, there's the snipe, the fully heroic Shogun battleship, and eventually the Sea Wings and the Shoguns get the kill on Natasha. There's no bear, though, to get the capture of that battleship. That's not a bear moving in in the north. Nothing to save that. Tangus and Wave Force Artillery on the right side. More Tangus for the anti-air. And this is going to try and push away this little force. Oh, that's a tank buster being frozen by three cryocopters. Tangus go for the transform. The Bullfrogs are a little bit slow to escape, so a couple of them do go down, and those Tangus probably actually got their value worth. 25 seconds on the clock for R2-R2. Big Cryo getting fires off, and all of the Tangus are going to walk into it, so the Tangus are going to be basically useless as the Shrink takes care of two of those Wave Force artillery, and the rest of the army just gets dunked on. R2-R2 is going to be able to delete this army in just a couple of seconds, though. They need to keep active. They need to keep moving in a random pattern. Otherwise, they're about to get eliminated. And where does it get utilized? Wave Force Artillery gets a shot off there, cleans something up, and those cryocopters flying dangerously close to those hammer tanks. One of those hammer tanks getting himself a Wave Force upgrade. Shogun Battleships, I think, still taking shots at this base over here. The bridge gets re-collapsed, or collapsed for the first time, maybe, if it's stuck around for a particularly long time. The army moves north. The Iron Curtain is ready for King Vegeta and only one and a half minutes left on his own vacuum imploder. Twin Blades get the jump on a couple of these hammer tanks. The cryocopters also getting pushed away. The bullfrogs are a little bit slow to respond, but there's just too many Tangus for them to really respond to. There's just so many Soviet forces or so many Empire forces for them to try and take on. V4 is trying to get some shots off, but of course they miss by a pretty far margin. Terror Drone going for the Infect on the Harvester. 
And the refinery is going to be almost ground down, but it gets sold off instead. I'm really surprised this vacuum imploder hasn't been fired off either at a big cluster of base or at uh, this group of army units. It takes a couple of seconds for the vacuum imploder to land, so you have to be careful. And of course, he might be waiting to use it against the vacuum imploder of King Vegeta if he's going to come up with some kind of Hail Mary play. Iron Curtain actually provides invincibility to one of these bullfrogs, so they're going to get some extra health there as uh, they kill off all of the tank busters, which I think was the primary use of that. V4, oh no! He misses the majority of the army, but he does check tank get a chunk of it and also that which is not something we've seen very often gets caught as well r2r2 lands his shot he takes a chunk of the army with him but he misses the cryocopters what he was really hoping to get as two shrunk down apoc tanks just get overwhelmed by their hammer tank opponents and a second apoc tank goes down as well that v4 suddenly getting some kind of an upgrade but it doesn't even matter Oh, it lands its shot! The dead V4 lands its shot, and the Tangu's going for the kill on the MCV with Emperor's Rage activated. They're going to be able to clean up the MCV. It does take a minute, even with heroic status, with this many Tangu's and with Emperor's Rage. It still just takes a minute for Tangu's to kill any kind of a building, and now they're going to go for the kill on the... Well, they only actually get one cryocopter there as R2R2 shows up with his own twin blades and they just get annihilated. Too many bullfrogs on the ground, an exploding shower of golden twin blades. Natasha gets the kill on that King Oni. The other King Oni frozen in time in mid-run and that, uh, that one Imperial Warrior didn't stand a chance at all. Somehow, someway, this is feeling like actually a pretty even game with as much back and forth as there has been. Tanya's about to get jumped by these Tengus. They kill the terror drone. Now they just need to run away from the King Oni. They snipe Natasha as well. They just need to run out their cooldown on their transform timer. And it looks like one, maybe two, three of them. If the APOC tanks can get close, will go down. But there's the transform. <laughs> this guy transforms anyways. Oh, no, V4. Oh, 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 he got away. He got away. He was already in jet mode. He knew what his destiny was going to be. Why are you killing the thing that's not shooting you? And instead, not jumping on those bullfrogs. Tank Buster Surprise getting called in by Yeager as well. Just to make... Oh, Iron Curtain to save those APOC tanks. So no matter how much you shoot them, they just won't die. The bullfrogs going to be getting cleaned up by the tank busters, I think. Yeah, there they go. They finally clean up those bullfrogs. And the terror drone getting the kill on a couple of those bull tank busters anyways. But they get the war factory. They actually do manage to clean up that war factory. And just a complete mess of action. This game has been finally that oil derrick goes down. This and uh, this and this are the only oil derricks left so and that so there's actually four four oil derricks that have survived only two maybe three of them have been cleaned up at this point in the in the game balloon bombs on top of the second war factory as well it won't go down the balloon bombs those are used in the uh, in the Cybert method where you don't realize that you can actually select the boom bo balloon bombs and direct them at the target so that they hit a little more precisely. I didn't know that for many, many years. That doesn't look like it got anything. Might have got some stuff. Three minutes, 22 seconds on the Yegor vacuum imploder. Didn't. Oh, that's because R2, R2 has been defeated. That's why. I was like, didn't R2 have the vacuum imploder? Isn't he the Soviet player? I missed that. And now there are only five players left. But Igor has a massive amount of stuff. He's still going to have to try and pull off a 1v2v2, which this late in the game is a lot easier than trying to do it from the beginning, like what Justin was trying to do. 
in that other game. Tangu's getting some damage against these MIGs, but there might be too many MIGs for them. And yes, they all get clobbered. Natasha gets sniped, so that Tangu earns his stripes anyways. And now he's going to die to a Twin Blade, but does a little bit of damage. And uh, someone calling some shots in on this Vacuum Imploder. And that is the strength of two ha MCVs of two factions being mixed together. Emperor's Rage being used on V4s and point defense drones as well. So even though they die to the twin blades, they get off a number of great shots anyways. Doing some damage to the tier three as well. Vacuum Imploder gets restarted immediately. And this King Oni is getting walled in as well. King Vegeta calling in something to help out with this situation. And, uh, and toxins, I guess, to try and kill Natasha. Oh, Natasha jumps inside of the APOC tank to save herself and to get the kill on this MCV, but he has to grind through something else, and there's actually going to be the invincibility of that flat cannon. So now that APOC tank can't do anything about it, and the satellite cannot be escaped. The APOC tank goes down. This Tesla coil, it looks like, will finish, and the King Oni will eventually get eliminated, although the splash damage will do a bit of damage. So many Tangus, so many Strikers showing up. A couple of them going to be able to transform to clean up the MiGs, and the Twin Blades are not long for this world either, but how many? Oh no, all of the Strikers transform. None of them remain in the air. Only two of them are left, and it goes down to the Flak Cannon, but the Tank Buster surprise is maybe going to get the kill on the MCV as the last couple of strikers transform to go for the base defenses and so close to killing off that MCV, but the toxins get them holding on by this by the hair by a hair's breadth as they're trying to maintain control of that MCV and of this location. The flak cannons getting shut down and these strikers are gonna make short work of these remaining base defenses. The toxins weren't enough. They almost were hostile and just and just hanging out in the bottom side of the map. And actually, they're going to be base pushing a little bit here. I'm not sure how they did this, but being forced to sell off. Hello and King Vegeta might be out of the game as they sell off everything in the south. They lose this expansion in the north. They've got so little left and they're trying to mount some kind of a defense, I think. But I'm not sure that it's actually going to be working out. Tesla coils and multi-gunner turrets pushing them away. And these three strikers fully heroic, or two strikers that are fully heroic, three in total, firing so many rockets. Oh, there goes the tier three. Hostelways, Justin59, and Yegor all joining forces to break this location. Oh, he actually does the balloon bomb, balloon bomb selection thing, and uh, gets the tries to get the kill on that vacuum imploder. It doesn't quite work out. Two new ore refineries getting established, and these actually have a decent amount of credits, 25,000 credits between them. All right, Justin and Hostile Ways are going to finish clearing out this base, but there's going to be the vacuum imploder to help them get rid of the debris. Oh, the Vacuum Uploader survives by just a smidge. Yegor going in for the kill. There's going to be the sell-off of that Vacuum Imploder. And Yegor is the only one left with a super reactor. And by that, I mean a super weapon. Vacuum Imploder and a super weapon combined to say super reactor, apparently. Yegor, the biggest singular player, but just in 59-59 in hostile ways, they may have the resilience of two to overcome the power of Yegor. All right, somehow, someway, King Vegeta and Hello are both still in this game. They've got that tight little base on the left side of the map just hanging in there with a couple of refineries split between the two of them. Shogun Battleships, Tangus, and Twin Blades joining forces with the Strikers that are left over in this base. But no, the Bullfrog gets the kill, and the Twin Blades show up to kill off that Bullfrog. Goodbye to this army. As no two more Bullfrogs showing up so that they can at least try and contend with these air forces. But ultimately, the Tangus 
continue to bust through those bullfrogs. And I think the Twin Blade Tangu army is going to be able to get the kill on this last King Oni and uh, Forever's MCV. Calling in satellites or support powers on his own stuff. Yeah, more toxins coming in. Satellites as well to try and push away this army as two barracks get established. But a flak cannon barely makes it through. So they actually were able to establish themselves in that top section of the map. Somehow, someway, these guys holding on to hope against all odds. There is so much stuff in this game, and again, with a 2v2v2 format, you never want to count someone out. So even though Forever Hello and King Vegeta are the weakest team, maybe they'll still come through? It's going to be uh, really tough for them, but maybe they'll still make it through. Hostelways and Justin... They have the strength of being two players and being able to pull off stuff like this with a shrunk down. Oh, Tanya just gets murdered with a shrunk down Riptide going for the uh, middle of the map, trying to clean that up. But ultimately, the Tengus are just too powerful for Tanya. There is no hope of stopping someone as powerful as a million Tengus. Apoc tanks getting dropped all over this army. I don't actually know where all of those missiles even came from. Uh, a couple of terror drones getting the infect on at these APOC tanks. And the Tangu's showing up, but the Bullfrogs are going to have a heyday. Five Bullfrogs to jump on every single Tangu. The MiGs get cleaned up out of the sky. The Twin Blades go bye-bye. And the Bullfrogs, even with all their anti-air firepower, don't have enough to clean up all of the Tangu's. Heavy losses incurred by our Empire player. And, uh, well, something's going to get called down upon him. Vacuum Imploder, I guess, got cleaned up by Tanya. Satellite's going to be getting rained down upon him by King Vegeta, it looks like. Wave Force Artillery getting an extra couple of shots off. Terror Drone goes down. They're still in this game. Ooh, Justin, he's built up a good army. Did Yegor give away too much when he was defending himself in the south? He lost all those hammer tanks. He lost so many Tangus as well, and now he's getting pressured potentially on two fronts. Eventually, that oil there does go down. These buildings must be just barely out of range of a fully heroic Shogun over there on the side of the map. Not a lot of anti-air here, so if there were some strikers, it could be problematic, but there uh, actually aren't any strikers. It's just Tangus and then a couple of Wave Force artillery. And the uh, the Mirage tanks and the Athena cannons can jump on that. Let's see how he chooses to engage this final squadron getting called in. Aegis Shield gets activated while the other Athena cannon does the damage, cleaning up those Wave Force artillery. Balloon bombs and final squadron coming in with the Shogun battleships to try and clean up this war factory. A couple of these balloon bombs not actually hitting anything. Not even cleaning up that terror drone as it spawns into the map. And toxins getting dropped on these Shoguns. Where's the defense? It looks like Igor might be starting to fall apart. He doesn't have the strength in him to fight battles on every single front. Tanya coming in for the kill of his infrastructure. And... So many APOC tanks, the flight of the APOCs. Not something you see very often as Tanya clears out the LZ and the APOC tank. Oh, look at that. Even the, even the Iron Curtain just delaying this army by so, so much. I'm not sure what the point of that Cryogeddon was. It was going to catch them as they dropped down, I guess, but they just easily avoided it and flew away. That Athena Cannon may actually survive this moment. No, it does get hunted down. Pops the Aegis Shield just to survive a little bit longer. But uh, this entire base is gone. Tanya jumps back inside of that Riptide. Justin is going to try and escape those Tangus.
Harvester gets killed off. Yegor is getting beaten back from every direction. Ooh, Tanya is still getting hunted. Oh, a time bomb gets called in to defend this Riptide, but it's too late. It wasn't perfectly placed or timed, and unfortunately it will be wasted as it just goes to nothing. That was a sick attempt there by Justin5959 to uh, get a kill on those Tangus. That would have been amazing if it worked. All right, Bullfrogs are here. Twin Blades are also here. The Bullfrogs getting cleaned up by the Tangus on the ground, but the Strikers are here to defend the Tangus, and this mixed army can be difficult to engage, but APOC tanks can clean it up pretty darn easily. Final Squadron also missing completely as they attempt to use their one clicks against each other. Twin Blades and, oh, these these APOC tanks are actually a little bit too far out. And now they're just going to get shredded as they try and close in on the Tangus. But the Transform will save the Tangus for now as the Apollos come in as the last hope of Justin and Hostile Ways. The Strikers now going to be engaging with the Twin Blades, the APOCs, and the Hammer Tanks as the Bullfrogs clean out the last of the Twin Blades. And it looks like Igor has got pretty much nothing left. Three engineers on the south side trying to establish uh, something maybe on the north side. I'm not sure what he's even got going on. A tier three mecha bay, it looks like, and not much other than that. Shogun battleships, two of them in total. One of them shrunk down and difficult to see. And this other Shogun battleship is just going to hang out under the bridge. And the bridge, uh, visually at least, uh, taking some of that damage away. Not sure that it actually does. And goodbye, Shogun Battleship. Goodbye. I think a couple of Bullfrogs died in some friendly fire as well. Justin Beaconing. Maybe he sees the engineers or something. Satellites getting called down on this area. Magnetic Singularity getting utilized to keep those harvesters in place. Oh, but they barely tried to escape at the last second. They didn't manage to get out of there. Magnetic Singularity firing off. Massive toxins blanketing the area. And the cryocopter is now going to be coming in for the freeze, but the Sea Wing gets the kill on one of them. And Yegor survives with a refinery under his control and a second one without a harvester. Igor has been beaten back playing his 1v2v2. He was not able to make it happen. If he would have been able to knock out one of the teams, he possibly still could have contended with the other one. But he was fighting two teams on two different fronts for part of this time. And ultimately, it's just been a little bit too much. The bear and the, I think, an engineer. Yeah, both of them together from Hello. Not, uh, not going to be able to do anything. How do you kill off a player? They just can't manage to do it. Just an expanding to these depleted ore mines in the north, trying to get his economy underway a little bit more. Natasha snipes the ore collector. And uh, Iron Curtain deletes Natasha, so that Peacekeeper can actually jump inside of the Ore Collector and uh, get it back to work. Oh, you have to manually tell them to go back to whatever they were doing in this case. The Ore Collector does not resume auto-harvesting, so that's a good thing to know. Oh, no! <laughs> the APOC tanks, several of them die to the Strikers as this Strike Force gets underway. Yegor is going to be losing his last... No, his war is refinery survives as the tank busters and the wave force artillery shred those APOC tanks and uh, going to be calling in toxins or something trying to eliminate those two. Oh, the magnetic singularity misses one of them. One of the tank busters still survives and gets a couple more shots off on this APOC tank. But of course, tank busters don't shoot up. One mecha bay did still survive. Hope remains alive 
as uh, Final Squadron gets called in against these forces that might actually, well, I don't think it'll kill off the APOC tank. It does a little bit of damage, but uh, I think that Tank Buster almost gets the kill. The MCV goes down, and this Tank Buster is now going to kill off this APOC tank. No, the APOC tank finally, with less health than anything is possible, the Space Cable has joined us. It has signified the death of Yegor. He fought valiantly a heroic 1v2v2 and is being honored by the appearance of the Space Cable. The APOC tank killed the MCV, but the, A the Space Cable saved it for the rest of time. Uh, King Vegeta, how did you get all of this stuff away from hostile ways? I don't think this stuff belongs to you, and yet somehow it does. A brilliant play there as Yegor has been defeated. Last ditch attempts from Hello and Vegeta as they are going to try and get themselves back into this game with four and a half minutes on the clock, 50 seconds on the Iron Curtain in this single Mirage tank. Uh, heading to the high ground, maybe? Oh, uh, he gets it back. Forces the sell-off of the Iron Curtain, but he gets back the Vacuum Imploder. And at the very least... Oh, another Super Reactor maybe grabbed. Yes, King Vegeta gets another Super Reactor. Forces the sell-off of the Vacuum Imploder. And uh, trying to break down that Tesla coil. Trying to get it desperately, but he won't quite be able to. Hello with Natasha on the front line. More engineers. He's going to claim the super reactor that come from behind. Attack. The super reactor goes down, but Natasha gets eliminated anyways. Oh, one another war factory might be taken over forever. Hello is going to get the war factory. No sell off. And now he can start producing vehicles out of hostile ways. War factory. He gets himself a terror drone and he goes for the kill of that engineer. Oh my gosh. Somehow forever. Hello has uh, earned himself a spot in this game. Building terror drones out of his opponent. Oh, he gets a V4 and the V4 escapes the satellites. Oh my gosh. Who's engineer? Okay, that's King Vegeta's engineer. Are you kidding me? This 2v2v2 is truly insane as that lone conscript gets eliminated. Hostile Ways looking to relocate himself to the center of the map. He's got all of his infrastructure getting reestablished there. And uh, this is just a hilarious little moment. V4 misses the super reactor. All right, so this is how you get yourself back in this game. That's apparently a V4. I assumed it was a Sputnik or something. Oh, man. Forever Hello and King Vegeta showing some hilarious tactics. Hostile Ways and Justin have not been able to clean this up just yet. They're, uh, they're looking potentially poised to, but they have just had a massive wrench thrown into the works of what they were trying to do. The Terror Drone can't necessarily close in on the APOC tank. I think a heroic APOC tank one-shots a Terror Drone pretty easily. Although the V4, the V4 can get the kill, so goodbye APOC tank. Ooh, Toxin's just missing this entire little army, but an Athena Cannon gets the kill as uh, something else gets called in on the Athena Cannon, and the Magnetic Singularity will pull it in to this area, which shuts down the Aegis Shield as well, although this Bullfrog is going to die also. I think it's... I don't know. It's, I don't know what that second thing was. Toxin's getting called in. King Vegeta and Hello slowly but surely burning their way through Justin's base. Oh, man. The MCV goes down as the satellites get knocked down from space onto the ground. Terror Drone going for the infect. MCV repositioning. Tanya's going to go for the kill on these conscripts. I 
cannot believe that they pulled this off. Their army has all been eliminated, but they pulled off some pretty incredible stuff here. The flak trooper isn't going over to kill off that cryocopter. So the cryocopter may actually get the freeze on the Tesla coil, and if it does, then of course Natanya can come over here and uh, kill everything off and then deal with the Tesla coil herself. No, Tanya doesn't realize the moment that she has in the sun. She will head off along the edge of the map. Sells off the refinery. Oh, V4 coming in from the left side will get the kill on that refinery. As uh, Tanya could potentially go for that King Oni. She clears out the building. Bullfrogs and Twin Blades. You build APOC tanks and then they just die, so you go back to Twin Frog because that's what really wins you the game. The APOC tank is going to help clean up those buildings. Tanya is hoping to find an unsuspecting base. I think she's about to... No, the Terror Drone doesn't get the kill on Tanya. She gets the drop on the Terror Drone by contrast, but two Terror Drones, four Terror Drones here. I don't know that Tanya can kill four Terror Drones. Let's see... Oh, she gets all four of them. None of them managed to get the kill on her. And there's still more open space. She can still manage to get into this base. She just has to run, run, run. And if she can't, the Twin Blades might be able to open up a path for her. The walls slowly but surely sectioning her off, and they can't go any further. She can run around, but they've bought enough time that they can completely encircle the airfield. She gets a thousand bucks for it anyways. And the funny thing is you do all of this and it doesn't even really matter because uh, you've got Twin Blades and APOC tanks and everything else right there. It's a race against time, but one team has stuff on the middle of the map. Magnetic Singularity pulling some of the stuff in. Tanya sitting somewhat useless, but uh, it may not even matter. Time Bomb gets activated. Magnetic Singularity pulling in this stuff. And the satellites crashing down on the buildings as the toxins try and clean up this stuff on the ground for both teams. Super Time Bomb Deluxe is ready to go. The APOC tank surviving all of the toxins, grinding his way to better health. And so much stuff getting cleaned up by... Oh my gosh, triple toxins. How many Soviet players are even in this game? So many toxins. The part of the screen is the brightest green that's ever existed anywhere in the world. King Vegeta has been defeated. We are back to a 2v1. As Hello is holding on desperately. Hope against hope as these couple of... Oh! Tanya Chrono swaps with that Peacekeeper, but the Peacekeeper gets the kill on the Terror Drone as well. Tanya frozen in place or frozen in time. I'm not sure what's wrong. Maybe when you Chrono swap infantry. Oh, no. Tragedy. As Tanya time belts back to the other side of the map. Are you kidding? What? <laughs> Justin5959 with the pro plays on Tanya moments before those V4s impacted. I mean, that was like a movie moment where they wait until the last second to defuse the bomb. They literally could not have waited any longer for Tanya to potentially die from those. No, get inside, get inside, get inside! Oh, King Oni dies, and there's the time belt activated again as the, as the conscript dies. And Tanya escapes. Forever hello. Still in this game. <laughs> He's got an MCV on the south side of the map. Oh my gosh. Massive twin blade army moving in. Black cannon, not enough to stop it. And oh, not quite going to be enough. Perhaps satellites getting called in. No, magnetic singularity getting called in. Gonna shut down the bullfrog, maybe. Yep, draws the bullfrog in. V4 gets jumped on. APOC tanks are here. And the MCV is gonna get deleted. Still fighting the good fight. Hello is here. Oh, the refinery is gonna get engineer capped, maybe. No, it gets sold off anyways. 
The MCV getting sniped. Oh, it's just too much. Forever Hello is going to have to say forever goodbye. Satellite misses the MCV because it's already eliminated. Refinery getting targeted down. What a match this has been. Only a barracks in the north side. No, he's got a war factory and a refinery, so he's actually technically still capable. Stop grinding the stuff that I want to capture. I'm trying to do something here. And Forever Hello has been defeated. What an incredible 2v2v2. Justin and Hostile Ways managed to take it in the end. They got beaten so far back from the beginning, but by the end of it, they had slowly crawled their way out of the hole and emerged victorious. Yeager fighting admirably till the end. A fantastic showing from him and Forever Hello and King Vegeta both doing so much to stay in that game for so long. That'll do it for this 2v2v2. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cybert signing out.